Hi, everyone. Um, if you are watching this video, you are applying for student teaching. So congratulations, because you have made it. Uh, you are finishing up the block. You are finishing up your graduate program. And this is a fantastic time for you. So um, I'm really proud of you. And uh, I know this is stressful, too. So I'm hoping that this little video that I've created will actually help you out and answer some of the questions you have about the student teaching experience. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and I'm gonna take you to a document that you will be receiving and um, from your block professors as well as for grad students from Dr. Kaysen. And so this document has all the links you need for student teaching and for applying for student teaching, but I wanted to go through it and then I will actually show you the application as well. So first of all, um, the application due date is September 30th. So that's a, that's a hard and fast date. So please get it into our office before or by that date. Um, you will go to the Educator Licensure and Clinical Experience page um, on the BSU website and I will show you that. Um, and from there, you're gonna go to an, uh, the practicum application link. So again, you can go through the BSU website, but you can also go through, these links are live in this document. You're gonna complete the application. And then once you've applied, you're going to receive eventually over the next few, few weeks after applying from Mrs. Tangway, you'll get a link to request your placements. And um, this request for placement form is a form where you will list four preferred practicum placement locations. And I want to talk about that a little bit because it's a little bit different now in the time of COVID than it has been in previous years. So if you have some, a friend who graduated um, back in May or um, a year or so ago, they will tell you that they made their choices and they probably got one of the choices that they made for a student teaching location. Unfortunately, for your friends who are student teaching now, some of them ended up not where they had hoped to be at all. And that is because things have really changed with COVID. Schools have that had uh, told us they would take student teachers, uh, decided that that was not possible for them and they couldn't take student teachers. Teachers who were gonna work with students, um, we have uh, some who have um, contracted COVID and they are not able to continue having a student teacher. We have buildings which um, are not allowing our student teachers to enter them. So our student teachers are uh, doing their work remotely or, um, and at best, they're working in a hybrid format. Some people have started, some people haven't started, won't start until next week. And some are actually going to start, um, people who are in the city of Boston are starting in two weeks. In addition to that, we have people who still are waiting for their placements to be confirmed. And that's because of just the, the craziness and the um, last minute decisions that are coming through from the school systems because of all the pressure they're under and all of the moving parts to educating children and creating a safe environment for both students and teachers. So this part of the application process is going to require your greatest patience and your greatest professionalism. So you can request four different locations and please make them four different locations, not four different schools in a district, but four different actual districts or towns that you'd like to be in because um, we cannot, usually in districts, districts are fairly uniform. So if a district, it isn't just that a school won't take student teachers, it's a whole district that won't take student teachers. So um, you wouldn't wanna be in four different schools in a district that is not taking, you wouldn't want that those to have been your choices if it was a district that isn't taking student teachers or is only is saying to us, well, we can only take one or two. And that happened a lot for this semester. So we anticipate that some of these concerns from districts will continue into the spring semester. However, that's the bad news first. The good news is you will get a student teaching placement and you should 
put down where you would like to go, knowing that we'll do our best. And we really will. We always do um, try very hard to get you where you would like to be, um, if it is at all possible. And so again, just be patient, understanding, and, um, and know that you will uh, do your student teaching and you will get your license to be a teacher in the state of Massachusetts and you will become a teacher. So if you are already a teacher of record, or if you are a para in a school, then you may apply for an employment-based practicum. And that employment-based practicum is a separate application, and it is within the student teaching application. I'll show it to you in a few minutes. So if you're not the teacher of record and you are a para, you need to make sure that there are certain components of the teaching that can be um, uh, guaranteed by the principal of the school that you're in. So your principal will need to send an email to me, Dr. Ingall. So what that email needs to state is that you are able to teach lessons to complete the CAP in all the subject areas, and you all know CAP very, very well. You must be released from your instructional aid role, for example. You cannot be assigned as a one-to-one -one during the semester that you are student teaching. You can work as a general aid um, in the classroom, um, and you may, but you may not be pulled out to cover other classes. And you must be able to complete a two-week full takeover of the classroom and have a licensed teacher supervising you. The complete student teaching application, again, along with the practicum, um, the employment-based practicum request, are all due by September 30th. Okay, so now let's look and see how we get to that application. So we're going to do that right now. So on, when you go to the BSU website, please go to the webpage for the College of Education and Health Sciences. Once you're there, go to the Educator Licensure and Field Experience or Clinical Experience site. Um, on this site, you'll see over here to the left, the Spring 21 Practicum Application Form. Again, the deadline, very important, obviously. We keep telling you about it. And this is the application. And it's a long application, there's lots and lots of good information on it. Uh, and it, one of the most important things though is, and we need to talk about this, are MTELs. Your MTELs all must be completed before student teaching. I know your friends who are out in student teaching this semester were um, allowed to have an outstanding MTEL. That was because, um, uh, because of COVID, it was difficult to plan and to find openings for MTELs, um, find uh, locations where you could take them. And, but now much of that has been solved. And so even though it is still, um, you need to apply early and you need to get these done, if you still have an outstanding MTEL, it needs to be done and the deadline for all MTELs is January 4th. That's our deadline in the College of Education and Health Sciences. So please, remember that and please work toward that and figure that in because if not, if you are not, if you do not have your MTELs completed, you will have to postpone your student teaching until the fall of 21. So you wanna have them done and I know you will um, and have them have passing scores on everyone. So, and you also need to have a minimum of a 2.8 overall GPA and again, application due, you know the answer, September 30th. Now, the um, employment-based practicum form is here. You can click on that. You'll need to um, make sure that you have a quarry that when, you, which whatever school system you go into, they'll require you to have a quarry, even if you have a quarry uh, for this semester because you happen to be in a school system. If you are able to work in a school system this semester, that quarry is not universal. It does not follow you to every school system. And even if, for example, you are quarried and you are working this semester in the Brockton schools, they may require you because you're coming in as a student teacher to get a second quarry um, for the spring. So you need to check with whatever school system you are working with to find out what their requirements are. This link here 
will take you to our service region map. That service region map are all of the towns that we normally work with. All right, all of these, so you can see we work all the way down onto the Cape for Barnstable. We'll go all the way up here to um, some uh, of the districts and towns west of, of Boston and um, south of Boston, Franklin, um, uh, Rentham, those, those places. And we actually have several, several placements in the Boston public schools. So you will see that on your application um, on the, um, on the uh, form for your making your, excuse me, making your request. So that's like a big deal. Um, those requests for the, for uh, the Boston public schools are, a, are, a, are great. And we encourage you to take advantage of this amazing opportunity that's happening uh, for our students to work in um, one of the most uh, diverse and exciting school systems in the country. So um, please uh, take a look at that and um, consider that as an option for you. Our professional development schools are the schools where we place most of our students. And those professional development schools are on this page. You can click here to get a list of those schools. And those schools include um, the New Bedford schools, there are schools in Brockton, there are schools in Taunton, uh, and as well as, and you can see all of the schools listed here, as well as East Bridgewater. So there's a lot of great places for you to go. And if you choose to go to one of those districts, you have a high likelihood of getting placed in those districts. Um, those are easy ones because they take so many student teachers. Uh, so here is the application and the main piece of this that I want to bring your attention to. So most of this is pretty standard. Remember, this is not just for elementary and early childhood ed. This is the application that all of our student teachers apply, use. So like if you're in secondary ed, if you're in special ed, you'd be using the same application. So not every question is going to apply to you, which is okay. But down here, you're gonna see your pre-practicum diversity school. So if you had a chance to be in a diverse location, like for example, Brockton or New Bedford, Quincy, when you were in your um, L.Ed. 220 class or your 120 class or your, L your early childhood um, 230 class, if you were in any of those classes and you had a diverse experience and you are not able to go into classes during the block or during your student teaching because we're in COVID, then I would um, suggest that you write down here what the school was that you were at, what the district was, and describe that experience. If you went to your hometown school and your hometown was Pembroke and it is not a diverse location, then you can just write down here that you have not had a diverse experience. And we will make sure, because Massachusetts wants you to have that experience before you are student teaching, that you um, do have that experience during your student teaching, uh, during your student teaching. So just to keep that in mind, um, and so you need, might need to go back into your records and remember where you were for those um, first classes that you took in education. So I'm going to stop sharing now. So um, I hope this is helpful for you. Please let me know if there's any other uh, information you need. Feel free to ask your block professors. They know a lot about this. Your professors in your graduate program, they know a lot about the student teaching experience. Many of them are student teaching supervisors and they can talk to you about it. Um, if you need any help with the application process, please contact Mrs. Tangway. And I look forward to uh, seeing you on the list of students and helping you along in this process. So take care and we will talk soon.